Diffusion is one of the core processes of acceptance and commitment therapy. It's something I spend a lot of time working on with my clients. And it's a totally made up word, which makes it a lot of fun to say. So let me walk you through an example to understand how diffusion comes into play and how it can be beneficial in your life. Imagine there's someone you met that you're interested in. Maybe you find them really cute or they're really funny or kind or a million other little things. And through talking, you get the sense that they might be interested in you. But as soon as you start thinking that, as soon as you start kind of deciding, oh, maybe I'll flirt back, maybe I'll ask them out, your mind chirps up and it's mean. It pulls out every bullying, condescending ex <laughs> and high schooler you have ever encountered. It tells you, why would that person be interested in you? Oh my God, you're so embarrassing and awkward. You can't message them that many times. They're gonna think that you're a stalker. They're way out of your league, don't even bother trying. And so you withdraw because the thoughts are true, because you are a loser and ugly and stupid and unworthy of anyone ever loving you or finding value in you. This is what happens when we buy into the randomness that our mind throws at us. We get fused with our thoughts and our experiences. When you have the thought, I'm gonna be alone forever, or that person definitely doesn't like me, or I'm not X enough for them, and you believe that that's true, it pops into your head and you're like, yep, that's fact. It limits how we show up in the world, because if that's true, then why would I ever shoot my shot? Why would I ever reach out to them, flirt with them, ask them out? Why would I keep showing up, even if it's something that's important to me, if it's never gonna happen? And unfortunately, the longer we've had these thoughts, these memories, these sensations, these feelings, the more examples we have to point to, to go like, see, there is something wrong with me. This is just who I am. The more fused we get with that idea, the more we buy into it and believe that it's true and the smaller our world gets. Now I can't promise through diffusion exercises and techniques that that person will say yes if you ask them out. But I can say that if we can learn to get a little bit of space from what's happening up here and in here and how we interact with the world, what we choose to do next, you get the chance to show up to the world in a more authentic, meaningful way. When we're fused, it's like this one-two punch. Thought response. It might feel automatic. It might feel like you have no control over it, right? You feel an urge, you do the action. You get angry, you yell. You get embarrassed, you shut down. You wonder what if you go down an endless rabbit hole that leaves you with more what ifs and worries. What diffusion helps us do is pause and look at that pattern. See if how we are responding and reacting to what's showing up, how it's working for us. And the better we can get at noticing that pattern, that thought and reaction, the better we get at creating that space. And in that space is where you are in control of your life. Our mind throws out thousands of random thoughts a day. Our body throws out lots of weird signals. We feel a hundred different things throughout the course of the day. And we have a lot of memories and B-roll running through our head. When that thought or feeling shows up, we don't have blinders that are keeping us looking forward. We can pull that down and see the world in front of us, we can choose something different. I can have the thought, there's no way that person could be interested in me, and ask them out. I can't do it without feeling like I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> but I can take a step. I can choose how I wanna show up to the world instead of just believing that everything my mind says is real or true. Narrowing my world based on that. My favorite question to ask myself when I'm like really caught up in my head really stuck on a thought, really kind of down a mental rabbit hole, is simply, is this working for me? Is this helping me? And like 90% of the time, the answer is no. And then I ask myself, okay, what is one thing I can do that's more aligned with the person that I wanna be? That's more in line with my values? And at first it might be, I'm just gonna take a breath. I'm just gonna sit back and I'm gonna notice the buzzing in my head or describe the sensations in my body. And I might go on and do the same thing I normally do, but at least I've created a little bit of pause, a little bit of delay. And if I can begin to do that more and more and more and create that more space, if I can defuse from what I'm experiencing, then it gives me more of a chance for me to be in control of how I show up next and what I do next. 
what if instead of I'm not good enough, it's I'm having the thought that I'm not good enough. I'm noticing that my mind is telling me I'm not good enough. Suddenly it doesn't feel as scary. It doesn't feel great. <laughs> but doesn't feel as like capital T true. I'm able to acknowledge, oh, this is a thing my mind's throwing out. It gives me a little breathing room to decide what to do next. And the next step is learning just how to be present, pay attention to what's happening in this moment right now. So we can see that one, two punch. And I promise you it's more than mindfulness exercises. <laughs> Check out my next video to see how.